Now, India has sealed the deal to make payments for oil imports from Iran in rupee terms. President Vladimir Putin indicated that they are in favor of using Chinese currency for trade in other parts of the world, like Africa, Asia and Latin America. And trade between the two countries hit a record of $190 billion last year. Much of those payments were made in Chinese and Russian currencies. Hello, everybody. How did US dollar dominate the entire global trade for 100 plus years? And why are we talking now about de-dollarization as a concept? To understand that, we need to learn how US dollar is embedded in every single cross-border transaction. Well, almost every transaction. 88% of the foreign transactions in 2019 involved US dollar. Now, let's start with a simple example. Imagine Pawan is looking to travel from Hyderabad to Dubai and the flight that he's taking is from Emirates and the price is 20,000 rupees. He needs to transfer that 20,000 rupees from his Indian bank account to the Emirates bank account which is located in Dubai. However, the Emirates bank account does not accept Indian rupee. So, there are two other intermediary banks over here which enables the cross-border transaction through UST. Bank number one is associated with the Indian bank and bank number two is associated with the Dubai account of the Emirates. Now, Indian bank, once it receives 20,000 INR from Pawan, it will send a message to bank one saying that it can transfer the equivalent of 20,000 INR in US dollar to bank two. If we take the exchange rate of one USD is 80 INR, bank one will transfer 250 US dollars to bank two and bank two then initiates the transfer of dirhams which is the currency of uae to the dubai account of emirates and it will again take into account the exchange rate for us dollar to dirhams and if we assume it to be one us dollar equal to four dirhams it is sending thousand dirhams to the emirates bank account this completes the entire transaction and as we can see here there are two additional bank accounts which are facilitating the transaction through us dollars and typically these bank accounts are sitting in the us so technically every single transaction is touching the us soil now how did we come to the situation where the entire global trade is dependent on us dollar so much to understand that we need to go back in time to early 1900s during the 1900 to 1945 time frame, all the European superpowers, Great Britain, Italy, France, Germany and USSR were involved in World War I and World War II. There were not many major technological advancements during that time frame and to top it all, whatever was being constructed ultimately was being destroyed. So by the end of the World War II, 1944-1945, the European economies were in a pretty bad situation. And to compare it with US, US was not involved in these battles directly. Well, it was supporting the allies, but it was not located in the war zone. So US had the advantage of supporting its growth during this time frame as well. And when the entire world was looking for that stability and growth post World War II, US was ready to lend its hand and also lead the pack. 1944, 44 countries from around the world came together and agreed to the fact that they will continue to have global trade in US dollars and they pegged their currency to US dollar and US dollar in turn was pegged to gold. Now what does this mean? It means that if any country has excess US dollars at any point in time which it does not want to own anymore, it can go ahead and exchange with the US government and get gold in return. That was a win-win-win situation for everybody. And during the same time frame, US was also developing deep relationships with Saudi Arabia. The building blocks of that relationships were pretty straightforward. Well, US was ready to offer military support and Saudi was ready to offer established and secure energy lines to the US. However, US also had one more clause in this relationship. That is, Saudi should agree to the foreign policies that US is getting ahead with and also Saudi should be selling oil in dollars to any country out there so that all the other countries can continue to go ahead with global trade in US dollars. 
Well, this worked out wonderfully well for the US dollar in the long run. In 1971, when the US government removed the backing of gold for the US dollar, people around the world still could see a purpose of holding US dollar because they could purchase oil from the Saudis. Now, this wonderful relationship between the US dollar and the global trade continued for decades after that as well. Well then, when everything is going good, why are we suddenly talking about de-dollarization? Why does the world want to move away from US dollar? To understand this, once again, let's take a simple example. Comparing US dollar with Amazon. Well, it might sound like a weird comparison, but just hold on to the next part of the conversation. Amazon is a marketplace which is connecting buyers and sellers. It's a platform, that's it. Similarly, US dollar is also a platform which is enabling different parties to come together and conduct global trade. Now, this is important to understand because both of them have the same leverage, that is data. While Amazon is collecting huge amounts of customer data, US dollar, the US government, is sitting on a lot of transactions, the global trade information around it right now. And how does the US government use it? Typically, it uses for surveillance of what are the transactions happening around the world. And after 9-11, US has increased this entire surveillance. The optics around this highlights, we are cutting down on money laundering activities, we are cutting down on terrorism activities, so on and so forth. So it is taking the moral high ground and conducting these surveillance activities. However, not every country is okay with having a surveillance on its own activities. Now, the second thing is also because it has leverage, US is able to impose sanctions on countries which are not aligning or agreeing with it on different foreign policies. For example, when US and Iran did not align on their nuclear policies, US immediately reimposed the sanctions on Iran in 2018. Now, what does this mean? It means they blocked the US dollar reserves that Iran was holding. So essentially cutting off Iran from the global trade. Now, what does this do? If another country wants to trade with Iran, they have no other option because everybody was doing the transaction using this particular platform, US dollar. So a lot of countries now were looking forward to alternate systems which wanted to do trade with Iran. For example, European Union developed their own systems to go ahead and transact with Iran. India similarly also has a bilateral agreement and they trade with Iran in a completely different way. Now, a lot of these kind of situations started to emerge. India, Russia, China, Russia. Recently, China and Brazil agreed to ditch the US dollar to conduct trade between these two countries. Now, what happens here? When the suppliers and the buyers leave a platform, the power of the US dollar will also go down. Well, is it going to happen tomorrow? Not necessarily. If you look at Amazon, Amazon has such a strong hold on the customers and the sellers. It takes a lot of years and effort from different companies to probably replace Amazon. And it is the same case with US dollar as well. And if we look back at the history, Every corporate company has a life cycle. They survive for 50 years, 100 years, but ultimately they go down. Similarly, all the dollars, the reserve currencies of the world also have a life cycle. As Ray Dalio has himself mentioned in one of his books, the dollar or typically any foreign reserve currency has a lifespan of 94 to 100 years. And we are currently nearing that lifespan for dollar. Well, what do you think? Do let me know in the comments. But I believe that this platform play, whether it is Amazon or whether it is US dollar, has to go through certain cycles. And we can't avoid these cycles, whichever way we are looking at this. Thank you so much for listening to me, guys. Please go ahead, click on that subscribe button and also like button if you enjoyed this video. It means a lot and gives me motivation to continue making these kind of videos. Take care. See you. Bye-bye.